the Joe Rogan experience. What weight do you walk around at? Uh, about one. If I'm completely just kind of like bullshitting, doing whatever, I've right. gotten to as high as like 195. Now, uh, when but, you're in training, like when you get, like say you're four weeks out, mm-hmm. where are you at? Uh, 85 usually. 185? Yeah, 85. So Eight. you're cutting a lot of weight, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's... Uh, do you see yourself ever moving to 70 or... No, not not 70 necessarily. Just because th- those guys there... you. you at that point, you're talking about a frame issue. Right. You know, you, you got guys that are like six foot one, and you know they're, they're just it's a it's Gorillas. a different it's a different body yeah. style. You know, I, I train agree. with a lot of them high mm-hmm. level welterweights too. You know, it's it's a different body style. I, I'm more suited for 155. It's just we, you know, some of the things that I got to play around with. I, I think will keep happening in the upcoming months. I didn't project that I would fight again until July or so. So a lot of the things that I was doing diet wise was kind of getting to that. And they approached me with this Barboza fight maybe like eight weeks earlier than that. So uh, mm-hmm. I just had to do what I had to do. So is it a matter of just you didn't taper off quick enough or you just came in too heavy before you started? You know, it was just it was just the timing wise, you know, you I missed it by one pound. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something on that timing that, I, that I've really got to figure out. And that was the biggest problem with with the uh, Tony Ferguson fight. Uh, you know, I can break it down for you. We, we, so usually, uh, you know, I'm normally about 185 through six weeks of diet. I can usually diet down to about 76, 77. Like that's where I'm optimal. Uh, and then from there, I start the water cut. So the week of the fight, the Tuesday, I'm 76. Uh, you know, I save that all the way until, you know, I overload my body with water and, you know, flush out some of the, the, the sodium and uh, the carbs and all that. Um, I save the rest of that up until the day before. And I try and cut as much as I can as uh, because I want to spend as little de- time dehydrated, that dehydrated as possible. And I think that's some of the problem with having these early morning weigh-ins is the timing issue of it. Because you wake up and then you have to start like I, from the time you wake up rather than if it's at 4 o'clock in the afternoon like it used to be, you'd be able to do it all throughout the day. Yeah, yeah. I can cut more, you know, reasonably through the morning. You know, so you, you can feel wake like up at if reason- you had more time, you would have been able to make it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. 100%. Yeah, my, so my body was... So it's just a time was, thing. I, yeah, see, was, I got confused. When they were doing this early morning weigh-ins, I thought you had, like, like from 8 a.m. to 4 o'clock to Right, it. right. That's what right, I thought. Yeah. I thought if you weigh in early, go ahead, weigh in early. But they gave you the time. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not really... I don't really know the solution either. You know, I don't think nobody really knows the solution to that problem, the the, the time frame. Because you are seeing a lot of guys miss weight because of that. And I think that's, that's one of the biggest problems. Not only that, but guys are going to sleep completely dehydrated and sleeping through the night 20 pounds dehydrated that's a lot of water coming from your blood your blood gets thicker your heart rate slows down when you when you sleep i mean you know i I try my best not to spend as much time dehydrated as possible yeah so it's just a timing issue on that last one especially when you see guys like those angels that just can't do it anymore and he goes up to 70 he looks better than ever what do you think about that it, it, it's, it's always an option for me. It mm-hmm. would be an option now. Like I, I would, I would entertain the right fight at it for sure. It's just right now at, at the state of it is you know they're doing this bullshit interim title and you know Tyron's sitting right there and it's, it's a right. lot of movement. It's not a lot of movement at the top right now. So 155, just more fights interest me. It's bigger challenges. I think the guys are honestly better at 155, 170. Maybe in the future, but you know it's got to be the right type of fight or something. Yeah, there, well, there's so many good fighters now. From I mean, you go all across the board. I mean, pretty much every weight class yeah. is strong now. But yeah, I agree. I think 55 is probably the strongest weight class right yeah. now. Yeah, and, and, and it's and it's so strong that you can make a 165 pound. I mean, I, don't, yeah. I really don't see what what the holdup is on it. Do I agree. a 65, do a 75. I agree uh, because we have so many guys that yeah. can bounce between those, and, and you'll have a whole new top 15, a whole new champion, and they'll be just as strong as any of the two weight classes next to it. I couldn't agree more. I, th- I think it's very important that we spread it out better. I think 10 pounds is reasonable. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the way boxing has it, they just, they, you know, they have a 54 and then they have a 60. That seems a little ridiculous. Yeah, 47 absolutely. and then they have a 54. I think you'd be better off with 10. Just a straight yeah. up 10 pounds, that's reasonable. But when you go from like 85 to 205, that shit's crazy. That's some big boys. That's, <laughs> that's some big boys. That's a big some gap. Of the, some of them, too, even 55 to 70, because yeah. most guys, uh, you know, like a normal size guy is about my size, 185, 190 pounds. Mm-hmm. That puts you in that in that middle. You know, yeah. you got guys like me with a lot of muscle where I'm not going to lose a lot of fat in between. You know, right. even for this one, I was 177, but I was four and a half percent body fat. You know, I couldn't really lean. You can't get too much more lean than that. Uh, a you were four and a half percent body fat when you weighed in? 
yeah, before, uh, well, I was four and a half percent maybe two weeks before the fight, actually. But are you getting calipers or are you doing how they how they test it now? Over they at the dunking uh, you in the water? No, no, over, over at the uh, PI. They really? have a uh, special oh, that scales. body thing? Yeah, they've got oh, like. Oh, so those scales aren't that good. Yeah. Here's the thing about those scales. Those scales, when you hold on to those things, mm-hmm. I mean, some of them are okay. But the best way, they say, is submerging you. There's a submerge one, and there's another one that uses some sort of, like, electricity thing. Like, you lie in a bed. and it, I think the, yeah, the Performance Institute has that, too. They're explaining that shit to me. Yeah, yeah, the the, the, the full scanner. Yeah, yeah. I've done that a, a, a few times. But it's much sounds, quicker, much easier just to get on the scale. And as long it just as— sounds real low. Four and a half percent sounds It does, low. but as long as it's, it's uh, still— the same measurement, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. as my last fight. For the right. Tony fight, I was five and a half percent on so those So as long as it's in the same, with the same calipers uh, yeah, or whatever I mean, the fuck they're using, you yeah. know that you're basically on point. Yeah, That's exactly. I, I, I can compare it at least. Uh, but again, I can't get much that much leaner, you know. It's, right. it's mostly just going to come out water. If, if they add a 65, then, you know, I, I've got 10 more pounds of water that I don't have to cut out. <laughs>